welcome back. In the last video, we learned how to identify and use the well-known X-Wing pattern to make candidate eliminations. But as I am sure you will all experience, many times there is something that looks almost like an X-Wing, but it is spoiled because it has one or two extra candidates in one of the base sets. Sometimes when this happens, we can still make some of the eliminations that would have been possible if it were a perfect X-Wing, but only if certain requirements are met. So today we are going to learn how to salvage these imperfect X-Wings and still possibly benefit from them if the conditions are just right. So let's go over to the puzzle board and I'll show you what I mean. In the last video, we learned how to identify an X-Wing and how they are able to produce candidate eliminations. But many times you will find an X-Wing that has extra candidates and so at first glance it might look like there is nothing you can do with it. It looks imperfect or messed up. But as it turns out, if there are one or two extra base candidates in one of the 3x3 three three blocks containing one corner of an X-Wing, it is still possible to make eliminations, but only within that block. Let's see how this works. In this diagram, we have a normal X-Wing on candidate 5, with the base sets in rows 1 and 4. As you can see, there are only two candidate 5s in row 1, and there are only two candidate 5s in row 4, two conjugate pairs. So all the other candidate fives in columns three and five that lie outside the four yellow cells of the X-wing rectangle can be eliminated as false, right? Okay. But what happens if there is an additional candidate five in row four that seemingly spoils what would have been a perfect X-wing, like this? As we learned in videos number four and 4A, in Sudoku, we often look at all possible cases in a certain situation, and if they all lead to the same conclusion, then we know that conclusion must be correct. This is called a verity, from the Latin word veritas, which means truth. Veritas, by the way, was the Roman goddess of truth. So let's apply this principle to this imperfect X-wing. The extra candidate 5 here in row 4, column 2, or R4C2, is known as a fin. An exofin, to be precise, but let's just call it a fin for now. As you may recall, an X-wing is a fish by definition. And if you use your imagination, it is possible to perceive this extra candidate 5 as a fish fin jutting out to the side. Calling this thing a fin is actually one of the better analogies in Sudoku terminology, in my opinion, but that's another subject. I will always highlight the fins in blue, like this. Any candidate in any Sudoku puzzle is either true or false. That's it. That's all it could be. So let's examine the two cases for this fin in R4C2 as it applies to block 4. If the fin is false, then our X-Wing is perfect, and these two candidate fives here in row five, column three, and in row six, column three, can be eliminated because of the normal implications of the X-Wing. Those two candidate fives will be false if the blue fin was not there. But if the fin is true, then all the other instances of candidate five within block four will be false. So these two candidate fives in the red colored cells are false either way and can therefore be eliminated with confidence. Does that make sense? Both possibilities for the fin being either true or false lead to the same conclusion and prove that those two candidate fives in the red cells are false. It's a verity. But notice that this applies only to block four in this case. The fin has absolutely no effect on the other three corners of our X-Wing in those other three blocks, okay? No effect. And the most important point of all, and forgive me if I repeat myself on this because I definitely will, haha, ha, is that in order for this technique to work, the X-Wing can only be messed up in one block. If there are fins in more than one block containing the base candidates, this will not work. 
Like if there is another fin up here in row one, column six, like this, or in row one, column one, like this, then the whole thing is out the window and there's nothing you can do. You cannot apply this technique at all if there are fins in multiple blocks of any fish. I am astounded that absolutely none of the tutorials I have seen on YouTube or written out on the internet explaining finned X-wings have ever mentioned this very important point. It's totally bizarre. It is an irresponsible omission. So if you only learn one thing from me in all my tutorials, please remember that a finned fish of any size can only be messed up in one block. And I say messed up because I want to keep this G rated. If there are fins in more than one of the blocks containing the base candidates, then no conclusion can be drawn anywhere based on fish principles and implications, okay? Now let's see what happens when there are two fins instead of just one. So let's say there is another fin in row four, column one, or R4C1, like this. So now we have to look at these two fins as being a single unit. What are all the possible cases for these fins acting together? It is impossible for both of them to be true, right? There can only be one five in block four. So the only two remaining possibilities are that A, one of them is true, or B, they are both false. Does everybody get that? Either one of them is true or they are both false. Those are the only two possibilities. With this in mind, we end up with the exact same results as if there were only one fin. Because if both fins are false, then the X-wing is intact and thus the two candidate fives in the red cells can be eliminated by virtue of the X-wing. But if either one of the fins is true, then all the other candidate fives within that block have to be false. So those two candidate fives in the red cells are false either way and can therefore be eliminated. Capiche? The presence of the fin or fins restricts our focus to only what's happening in the same block in which they are located. An extra candidate in one of the cover sets, which are columns three and five in this diagram, does not change anything it will still be a normal X-wing. But if the extra candidates or fins lie in either of the base sets, then this deviates from the basic fish premise where all the base candidates must be contained in or covered by the cover sets and therefore forces us to focus only on what happens in that block. A good rule to remember is that no matter the configuration, a candidate can only be eliminated if it sees all the fins. This simply means it must be in the same block with the fins. All right, now let's turn this on its side and see what it looks like when the base sets are in the columns. In this diagram, the base sets are in column four and column nine, and the cover sets are in row one and row five. As you can see, in columns four and nine, we have two conjugate pairs on candidate seven and they line up perfectly to form a rectangle, so this is an X-wing. Without any fins, we could make candidate eliminations in these cells. Okay, but now let's see what happens when we add some fins. In block three, if there were a fin here, then we could eliminate these two sevens only. And there could also be a fin in that cell as well. It could be either one. And in block six, there could be a fin here, or there could be a fin there, or both. And that would allow us to eliminate this candidate seven only, because that's the only seven that would be eliminated if there were no fins. And then if either one of those fins were true, that would also be false, the seven in the red cell. All right, now let's take a look at a few examples and some real puzzles, and then we'll move to the sashimi version. All right, in this puzzle, let's turn on the filter for candidate eight. And we see that there would have been an X-wing here with these four cells 
if not for the presence of that extra eight in the base sets. The base sets here being row two and row seven. So with this extra fin, we can still make the eliminations in block nine. And the two candidate eights that will be false are these two, because they would be false by virtue of the X-wing if the fin was not there. And if the fin is true, those two eights in the red cells will also be false. Therefore, you can eliminate both of them like that. Okay, next one. All right, in this puzzle, let's turn on the filter for candidate one. And we see that we would have had an X-wing in row three and row eight, except for these two fins right here. So the only candidate one we can eliminate in this case will be this one up here in row one, column six, because if the fins were both false, that would be eliminated because of the X-wing. And if either one of the fins were true, that same candidate one in the red cell could not be true. All right, next. Okay, let's take a look at candidate two. We'll turn on the filter, and we see that there was a potential X-wing in column five and column eight. Here, 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 and here, if not for the presence of those two fins. Now, I'm not gonna kid you, these are hard to see. X-wings are hard enough to find when there aren't any fins but you have to really use your imagination to say to yourself, well, there would have been an X-wing there if not for those two fins. So in this case, there is only one candidate two that can be eliminated because of those fins, and that is in this cell right here. So that two would be false by virtue of the X-wing if the fins were not there, and if either one of those fins were true, that two would also be false, so it can be eliminated. All right, next one. All right, let's take a look at candidate three in this puzzle and turn on the filter. And we see that there would have been an X-wing here, 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 and here. Again, the base sets in the columns with a fin here in row four, column five. So now in this case, we get to eliminate two candidate threes and they lie here and here because those two threes would be false if the fin were not there. By virtue of the X-wing, we could eliminate both of those threes. But if the fin is true, those same two threes are both going to be false. All right, next one. Here we have what would have been an X-wing on candidate three in columns six and seven. Let's turn on the filter. And we see here they are, here and here and here and here, except for this fin. So now, because of that fin, we are able to eliminate that three and that three because they would have been false by virtue of the X-wing if the fin were not there, and they would be false if the fin were true. So in both cases, it leads to a verity that those two candidate threes are false. Okay, and let's take a look at one more. Okay, this time the base sets are in the rows on candidate six. Let's light them up. And we've got one here, 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 and here. There's your X-wing. It would have been an X-wing with rows two and seven on candidate six, except for these two fins, all right? The fin or fins have to lie in one of the base sets. And so the only candidate here that we can eliminate is in row three, column five, and that is right there. And we can eliminate that candidate six because that would have been false by virtue of the X-wing if there were no fins, and that is false if either one of those fins is true. Okay, now let's learn what the term sashimi X-wing means. There is yet another way for an X-wing or any other fish to be spoiled or messed up and still produce some eliminations. And that is when one of the base candidates is actually missing. It's either not among the other remaining candidates in that cell, or the cell is already solved with another digit. The candidate is simply not there. When this happens, if there are no fins in the block where the particular base candidate is missing, then in an X-wing, you will have a naked single and you will get two cells solved like this. So let's look at this X-wing right here. Let's say that this five was not there. 
And let's say instead that there is a three already placed in this cell, okay? So now that base set in row four that was two candidate fives, there's only one candidate five. So that becomes a naked single and that gets solved for a five and this one up here gets solved for a five and then that remains a three down here in this other yellow cell, the five is false. So that just disappears up there. So now let's go back this is called a degenerate fish because it is incomplete. But this seems ridiculous to me because there is really no fish there at all. But if there are any fins adjacent to the cell where that base candidate is missing within that same block, then we have what's called a sashimi X-wing. Why sashimi? Your guess is as good as mine, but that's what it's called. And so a sashimi X-wing will always have a fin or two because without the fins, it doesn't really exist. Therefore, it could be called a finned sashimi X-wing. But we can shorten this to sashimi X-wing to make it simpler, okay? So let's say we have fins in these two cells. Now what happens here? Remember, those two blue fins can either both be false or one of them can be true because it's not possible for both of them to be true. So in the first case, if they're false, then we have what we saw before. We have the two naked singles here, like that. All right? So that means these two candidate fives have to be false because if these two cells are solved for five, those, they disappear. Those two candidate fives disappear because they cannot be true. All right, now let's say one of these candidate fives in the blue cells is true. Those same two candidate fives in the red cells, they cannot be true. They must be false and you can eliminate them like that just by virtue of the fins. Now this works whether that cell in row four, column three has a digit already placed in it or if there are other candidates in there, but the five is not there. Like let's say it looks like that. It's the same thing because either these two naked singles are true and the fins are false, or one of the fins is true, which makes both of these fives in the red cells false. Okay, that's pretty straightforward, right? So let's look at some real examples and some real puzzles, and then we'll wrap it up for today. Okay, let's take a look at candidate one. Let's light them up. And we see that in row four, we have a conjugate pair, and then this would be an X-wing if there were a candidate one in row seven, column seven, but instead there is a six place there. But that means these two cells are fins, which further means that we can eliminate these two candidate ones in these two cells right here. Now this is actually amazing that this works at all, but it really does. All right, next one. All right, here, let's take a look at candidate eight. And we'll light them up. And we see that there would be an X-wing here if there were a candidate eight in cell row two, column one, but there's not. Instead, we have two fins, and these base sets are in the columns, column one and column nine. So that means there's one elimination here. We can eliminate the candidate eight in row two, column two because that is the candidate that would be eliminated by virtue of the X-wing if there were a candidate eight in cell row two, column one, and those two fins were not there. And then if either one of the fins is true, the candidate eight in row two, column two would also be false. All right, here, let's look at candidate seven in column five and column eight. And we see that we have what would be an X-wing. And here's one of these cases where there's not a digit placed in this cell, but there are other candidates there. And I'm talking about row one, column eight, where the four, three, and the six are. That would have been our X-wing, which makes these two cells our fins. The base sets are in the columns. Those are our fins. Candidate seven is missing out of row one, column eight. So we have a sashimi X-wing. And so now the only candidate seven that we can remove is here because that's the only candidate seven that would both be removed by the presence of the X-wing if it were complete. 
and it would also be removed if either one of those fins were true. All right, next one. All right, let's take a look at candidate one in row one and row six. Here's our base set in row one, and in row six we have an incomplete X-wing with two fins. The base sets are in the rows this time, so that means our eliminations will be in the column, and the only two candidates we can eliminate are these two right here, candidate one, and both of those have to be false. Okay? And the next one, let's look at candidate eight in the rows, and we see that we would have had an X-wing here and here. That's a conjugate pair in row nine, and that would have been a conjugate pair in row three, but there's a five place in that cell, and we have two fins. So the only eliminations that we can make are in column seven in these two cells. And so we can eliminate the candidate eight in both of those red cells because they are false either way, whether those fins are true or false. All right, let's do one more. All right, let's look at candidate nine. And we'll look here in row two and row five. Now this one's kind of tricky. There's your base set in row two. And here's what would have been your base set in row five, but the fins are on either side of that place digit four there. But that still works, and it allows us to eliminate two candidates in this puzzle. And you can eliminate the candidate nine out of these two cells because they would have been eliminated by the X-wing if it were complete, and they are false if either one of those fins is true. So you can eliminate that nine and that nine. All right, I hope this is pretty clear. And if you want to see some more examples of these imperfect X-Wings, be sure to watch video 11A. So let's go back outside and finish up. So now we have three new solving techniques to add to our solving portfolio. Basic X-Wings, finned X-Wings, and sashimi X-Wings. Now don't forget to watch video 11A, which will contain several examples of all three types, along with other insights and tips. And then in video number 12, we will advance to fish of size 3, meaning they have three base sets and three cover sets. These are known as swordfish, and they are a very powerful solving technique. Learning how to identify and employ them will really get you on your way to becoming a Sudoku expert. So I will look forward to that. Until then, be well and be happy.